Okay, hi there, and uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at two different pricing strategies limit pricing and predatory pricing. So, how might a firm use limit pricing? Well, limit pricing is when an existing firm uh, tries to deter the entry of or the expansion of a fringe supplier in the market. And essentially, it's designed as a barrier to entry in order to protect monopoly power and also supernormal profit. The limit price set by the firm will be below the normal profit maximizing price, but above the competitive level. Um, and essentially what the firm is trying to do is find a price which is lower than the, than the estimated unit cost of the rival. So the existing firm is prepared to sacrifice some profits in the short term to prevent entry. As a result, if the limit price is set quite low, the potential rival, the potential entrant, may actually decide that the risks of coming to the market are too big. They could make big losses, some of that could be some sunk costs they might not get back. And therefore, if they can't sustain those losses, if they can't get to economies of scale, for example, they probably won't enter the market. And therefore, if, if limit pricing is successful, if it's an effective strategy, then the market is likely to remain highly concentrated in the hands of one or perhaps just a small number of dominant producers and they can keep earning those monopoly or supernormal profits. So here's the analysis diagram which would go with limit pricing. Can you see here a downward sloping demand curve, downward sloping AR and MR. Um, profit maximizing output is P1, Q1, that's the equilibrium output. Uh, the limit price is where the firm sacrifices some short-term profits. For example, it might cut the price to P2. It gets a bigger output, and therefore it's going to take more market share. However, the profit it's making, if you draw in the unit cost at output Q2, the total profit is less than it was before. So P2 minus C2 times by Q2 gives the total profit. So limit pricing essentially is sacrificing short-term profit to try to deter entry. Then you can raise your price back above P2 if those new firms don't come in. And the way to could, you could build the diagram, the way you could develop the analysis to a higher level to get to a stronger analysis marks is to draw in an average cost of a rival firm. Let's say that it's, it's the green dotted line. So that could be the unit cost of, of a potential entrant. Maybe they haven't achieved the economies of scale that you've already achieved. Um, P2 lies below that average cost. And assuming firms sell products at similar prices, then that firm, the rival firm, could well face the loss if they enter the market. Second question, explain how a firm may use predatory pricing. So predatory pricing is different to limit pricing. Essentially, it's the act of selling a good or a service below cost to basically to knock, to force a rival out of the market. The big four accountancy firms have been accused effectively of, limit, of predatory pricing in recent times. So the key point to note is that predatory pricing is a deliberate strategy. The aim is to drive one or more firms out of the market by setting low prices perhaps even as low as pricing below your own variable cost. If you can force firms out of the market, you can reduce competition, and therefore if you stay in the market, the price and profits will be higher. It can also be used by existing firms and also by new entrants into the market. A new firm may come in and say, right, we can make some losses, we're prepared to absorb our losses. Let's say, let's price it very, very low. Um, to try and take the market share, maybe force out an existing firm. I'll show you the diagram in a second. If they price low, they're going to pick up a lot of the market, uh, and therefore the, the losses um, could be big in the short term, but the profits could be high in the long term. If predatory pricing is successful, again, you build up your monopoly power, and the firm can then use their market dominance to increase prices in the long term to return themselves back to profitability. So here's the diagram. P1 is the normal profit maximizing price. P2, I'm going to draw this in for you, is the predatory price. Very low price, a price even below this firm's average variable costs. 
they could price higher than that but this is a very low price now if they do that there's the cost per unit so the profit they were making beforehand was the green shaded area if they slash their prices from p1 to p2 that means they now make a loss equal to the yellow area but the aim of course is to drive a firm out of the market so that they can go back to charging p1 maybe even higher in the long term uh, lots of examples of alleged predatory pricing the key point of course is that predatory pricing is illegal it's anti-competitive but it's also pretty hard to prove convincingly and conclusively but some of uber's rivals are claiming that uber has been making losses and racking up losses in part because they want to force existing taxi ride taxi hailing apps out of the market there's been a couple of examples recently of uber being taken to court for alleged predatory pricing but nothing has yet been confirmed uber of course is growing really quickly but in fact their losses since 2014 now amount to 12 billion dollars okay that was a video on limit pricing and predatory pricing